Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. of God, the glory of any man will be in Christ. Hello over there, Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited because of this one conference that will change your life coming to London for all of you in the United Kingdom and Europe from the 2nd to the 5th of June. Second to the 5th of June, right in the city of London. The venue is going to be Power City International Enfield, not London. Main Hall, St. John's Church. And the postcode is N134DA. And other details of the conference are on the screen. We'll see you there. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot, Righteous Invasion of Truth, presented by the Power Broadcasting Network. Abel Damina is my name. I want to welcome you to the broadcast today. Guys, listen, we're going to have an exciting time in the study of God's word. You know, the entrance of his word giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. As you come before the word of God with the simplicity of your heart, ready to be equipped, ready to be empowered, ready to grow, and ready to align with the thoughts of God, the plan and the intent of God for your life. Get ready, it's gonna be an exciting time together today. Call a friend, call a family member, help me share the video. Let's get the word around the world. You know, as a ministry, there's a mandate of God on our lives to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have, in Christ and what Christ can do through you. That's the mandate that is driving us to get this word to you every opportunity we have. Now listen, I have an instruction clearly to set up a global discipleship academy where I'm able to disciple as many of you as are following our teachings, as many of you as have been Christians but nobody has discipled you. Discipleship, it's an opportunity where somebody that is being discipled is given an opportunity to learn the fundamentals, the basics, the things that enables you to live out your true realities in Christ so that you're able to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, he said, all power is given to me. And then he said, you go into all the world and make disciples of all nations teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Discipleship is that opportunity where we're able to teach you all the things that Jesus commanded and help you align with the plan, the purpose, and the will of God for your life. We've pushed out the adverts and I just want you not to be left out. So if you have not been discipled, you want me to disciple you, there's an email on the screen right now. If you shoot an email to that email address, will respond to you quickly because we're getting ready to start the classes. It's going to be online. It's global and online. We're going to give you all the details that gets you enlisted into the class. And it's a free discipleship school. You're not paying any fees. Secondly, those of you that are not able to send emails, we have a WhatsApp number from anywhere in the world. If you shoot us a WhatsApp message, we will send you all the info so you can be a part of the discipleship classes so we're able to disciple you, equip you, empower you 
to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for your life. That's how we start 2022. And thirdly, I have just come out with three books of mine and I want to encourage you to get copies of it. This one is Spirit Life. It's powerful material that helps you right from Genesis. The work of the Spirit has not ceased to function in and among men. The Spirit hovered over the waters and God spoke. The scriptures are replete with the work of the Spirit. So in this book, you will learn about the leading of the Spirit. You will learn about knowing how the Father leads his children. You will know about the inward witness, impressions of the Holy Spirit. Powerful book. It will change your life. The second book I just wrote is The Gift and Calling of God. There's a call of God on your life. How to locate that gifting and calling, how to steer it up and walk in the fullness of its reality. The third book is How to Win in Life, Walking in Love. The love of God that never fails. This book will equip you to walk above bitterness, strife. It will equip you to walk above all the things that the devil can offer anybody. And it will help you never to give room to the devil. These are three powerful materials that will change your life. Finally, remember I also have a book. It's called The Christocentric Meal. It's a daily devotional. And there are seven notes that a pastor can preach in his church for three years. They are Christ-centered messages. Very sound exegesis. It's called the Christocentric meal. It's on the screen. If you call our office or email our office to order for any of these books or all of it, I'm telling you, our office will get back to you quickly and make sure these materials get to where you are. Don't forget that our mission as a church is to equip and empower you to live out your realities in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. All right, I'm expecting to hear from you today on Discipleship Academy because classes are starting any moment from now. So don't procrastinate, don't delay. Looking forward to hear from you. Now fasten your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy fellowship. Now we began to look at the word of God and we've been dealing with two kinds of righteousness and I remember last Sunday when we're closing the service, we rounded up with the fact that in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, we see that Moses communicated with the children of Israel because of the state of their heart. So communication was determined by the state of the people's heart to whom Moses and the prophets communicated. In Luke 24, 25, this will help us in starting tonight. It says, and Jesus said unto the disciples, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, that the prophets have spoken. Next verse, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of which Moses. Which were written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets. In the prophets. And in the Psalms. And in the Psalms me. concerning me. So Jesus said to them, When I communicated with you, you didn't understand what I was saying because of your state. But these are the words. No wonder he called them fools. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. The word expounded is a Greek word harmonia. It means he interpreted. Harmonia is a Greek word which means the interpretation of signs and symbols. Which means that the communication of the Old Testament, whether Moses or the prophets, was actually not clear. So it required interpretation. He interpreted unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In all the scriptures. Meaning the entire communication of the scriptures wasn't clear. It required interpretation. And Jesus gave them the interpretation. And we began to see from God's word last Sunday that one of the greatest things of the Old Testament was temple worship. That was the greatest communication of the Old Testament. Temple worship. And we concluded by saying for 46 years they built that temple. 46 years. And Jesus showed up and said destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. Meaning that all I need to build a temple that God wants to live in is three days. 
after they built a temple for 46 years, God was still asking Isaiah, where is my house? Where is my house? Meaning the temple is nowhere I want to live. God has never lived in that temple, not even once. Never. His presence has never been there, not even once. But because the temple he was talking about was a spiritual reality. In the Old Testament, when they were communicated to in spiritual terms, they related it to natural. So they always saw things because of the state of their hearts. They were spiritually dead or they were unbelievers. And because of their state, you know, hence the language of communication or because of their state, hence the mode of communication. That's why both Moses and the prophets communicated with them in dark scenes, according to Psalm 78 verse 2, in dark scenes. He communicated with them using dark sayings. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now, what was the temple for? We want to look at what the temple, the temple was for. But before I do that, John chapter 2 verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. How many days? Next verse. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Next verse. But he spake of the temple of his body. He was talking about his body. They were looking at a physical structure, the state of their heart. They lacked revelation. Previous weeks ago, we saw that Moses knew the ways of God. The children of Israel knew the acts of God. They knew the wonders of God. They knew the miracles. But they didn't have a revelation of God. Moses had a revelation of God. So whenever they were communicated to in spiritual terms, they interpreted it in natural terms. He was talking about the temple of his body, but they were looking at that temple of Solomon or the temple of Moses. For the six years they built that temple. Look at the monument, the investments on that monument. Yet God was never there. God never lived there. God never wanted to live in a physical temple. Never. And that's why after all the building, he kept asking Isaiah, where is the temple? Where is the house that you built for me? So what was the temple for? Look at Hebrews chapter 3. Let's journey a bit. Hebrews 3 from verse 1 to 6. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house, as a servant, for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? Whose house are we? So Moses' house was not the house God was looking for. Because now there's a difference between Moses' house and God's house. Moses was a servant over his house. Jesus is a son over his house. Whose house are we? Distinction. The house that God was looking for was not a physical building. What he was looking for was the sacrificial offering of Christ. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Out of which a, a temple that is not made with hands will be constructed. Are we together here? So that was the distinction. Moses was called a servant. And we are Christ's own house. Now look at Hebrews 8, 1 to 5, still dealing with this reality. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Yep. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. He's talking about the priesthood of Jesus, that Jesus is set on the right hand of majesty in the heavens. Next verse. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Yep. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Yeah. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Yeah. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Now pay attention. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. 
as Moses was admonished of God yes. when he was about to make the tabernacle. Yes. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. Now, high priest we are in heaven. Jesus' his priesthood is in heaven. Now, and he said in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, consider Jesus the apostle and the high priest of our profession. The high priest of our profession is in the heavens. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 to 2. Please pay attention. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Yes. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. So the high priest has a job of offering gifts and sacrifices. Okay. Next verse. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. He himself, he the high priest, also has his own problems. He's not perfect. He also is, is riddled with infirmity. Okay, give me the next verse. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. So every time he offered sins, first of all, he offered for him, his own self. Because he was not guaranteed. That was the limitation of the earthly priesthood. That was the limitation of the priesthood of Aaron. They were imperfect men who first of all had to offer sacrifices for themselves first. Before they offer for the people. Alright, next verse. And no man taketh this honor unto himself. But he that is called of God as was Aaron. So the Aaronic priesthood was such that the people that offered the sacrifices were sinners. The writer of Hebrews now is giving us a distinction between the priesthood of Jesus and the priesthood of Aaron. The priesthood of Jesus was a product of his resurrection. The priesthood of Jesus was a product of his sacrificial work. He was made a priest after he rose from the dead. He was made a priest after he defeated hell and he had a worthy offering or sacrifice to offer on our behalf once and for all. And the good thing is that when he rose from the dead, he rose never to die. So as a priest, he was an eternal priest, not like Aaron, where the priesthood was limited to their lifespan. When you die, that's the end. They have to look for another one. In Jesus' case, his priesthood is forever. He never dies. He has defeated hell. He that died, died no more. He has risen forever. Can somebody shout a powerful hallelujah? This priesthood, this priesthood, the, the, the priesthood of, of the children of Levi was reflected in their lifespan. Their priesthood lasted as long as they were alive. When they died, it ended. But in the case of Jesus, for lack of a good word, the priesthood of Jesus is reflected by the lifespan of God. That means that priesthood will only end the day God ends. That's why God backed it with an oath. By two immutable things. It's impossible for God to lie. What God is saying is, I swear, as long as Jesus lives, salvation is eternal. Whatever his death, burial, and resurrection has procured for you, except I die. And I cannot die. And I cannot lie. So, when somebody says, when you are saved, you can lose salvation, what he's saying is, God, you are a liar. They don't know the implication of those words. God said, I am behind the priesthood of Christ. I swear by myself that Jesus is a priest forever. Hi, 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 hi. After the order of Melchizedek. So this priesthood is on the lifespan of God. Notice Hebrews 8.1. Just notice. Put it up. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Yes. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. We have such. We have such. That word such is actually eternal. We have an eternal priesthood. Eternal priesthood in the heavens. Meaning the priesthood of Aaron is not ours. We don't have anything in the priesthood of Aaron that reflects us or identifies with us. The priesthood that is ours 
is the priesthood of Christ. He became us. He became us. Did we read that? He became us. Give me verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 8. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. True tabernacle. You see that? Of the true tabernacle. How many of you remember? True riches. True tabernacle. True tabernacle means eternal tabernacle. Eternal. No end. That's the meaning of true tabernacle. Eternal tabernacle. Give me verse 3 and 4. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Verse 4. For if he were on earth. See the distinction. If he were on earth. He should not be a priest. Yes. Seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. If he were on earth he should not be a priest. Verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly who things. Who serve. Who serve. That word who in the Greek is hostis, H-O-S-T-I-S. -S. It also means here. It's used over a hundred times. So instead of who served, put it up. Who served, it will be here, serve unto the example. Here, serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Which... Meaning the entire testament. All right? Read on for me. As Moses was uh, admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So, question Who built the first temple? Huh? Moses. Let's see why he built it. He says, They serve as example and shadow of heavenly things. The word example is used six times. Who serve as example? Used six times. Is the word hypodegma. Hypodegma. H-Y-P-O-D-E-I-G-E-M-A. It means pattern. Pattern. Example it means pattern. Used later in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23. That is, whatever Moses built was patterned after something. So the question is, what was it patterned after? Whatever Moses built was patterned after something. Question, what was it patterned after? Now, the believer is not patterned after Moses. The believer in Christ is not patterned after Moses, nor Moses' temple. That's why when you hear people say, we have outer court Christians, inner court Christian, holy place Christian. It's just a show of illiteracy. There's nothing like that. The believer who is born of God is not patterned after Moses. Neither is he patterned after the temple that Moses built. So don't use Moses' temple to teach a believer. There's nothing there to teach a believer with. Rather, we use the believer to explain Moses' temple. We use the believer because the believer is the real deal. Moses' temple is not the real deal. The believer is the real deal. Am I communicating? Now, Moses' temple, we are meant to resemble Christ's work. Christ's work, his his, his home and his office. Christ's work, his home or house, and his of, office. Moses was trying to talk about Jesus, but the hardness of their heart didn't allow Moses to speak to them expressly. So since their heart condition hardened against the gospel, did not allow Moses to explain to them Christ. Moses now said, since these people cannot allow me to teach them Christ, let's hire carpenters. Let them go to the forest and cut down wood. And let us start constructing a physical structure. Per adventure, since we cannot communicate to them in words, they may understand structure. That structure that Moses built as tabernacle was Moses' frustration in trying to explain Christ 
to a people whose hearts resisted Christ. Moses wouldn't have used wood to build temple. He would have expressly used words to teach them Christ. But they were hardened. Only you remember, you understand. So instead of doing seminar, like we're doing here, and teaching Christ, okay, he now hired carpenters to go and buy wood and start constructing a temple. And they were working day and night under the sun, under the rain, trying to construct a physical structure to try to use it to communicate what words would have done if their hearts were open to the gospel. You should thank God for what Jesus has done. Because we will have just hired carpenters. And carpenters will recruit many of us. And we'll be feeling privileged that we are building the temple. Temple that God will never live inside. But today we have something better. Instead of hiring carpenters, we are bringing you revelation. Oh, somebody is not shouting hallelujah. So that's what happened in Moses' case. The people didn't allow Moses to explain Christ to them in simple words. So Moses had to hire carpenters to explain. Under the sun for 46 years. To resemble what Moses was trying to teach. So what Moses was using to communicate to them is called shadow. Shadow is the word S-K-I-A, skia. Shadow. Skia. It means shadow it means it's not real skia it means it's not real colossians 2 17 is where that word skia was gotten from shadow which are a shadow of things to come yes but the body is of christ what they had was skia a shadow no reality in it that means that temple didn't have reality there was no god in that temple It was just a mode of communicating with unbelievers. What Paul will use five lines to say to the Gentiles, the writer of Hebrews will use 13 chapters to speak to the Jews. <laughs> what brother Paul will use five lines of words to say to Gentiles and they will understand. The writer of Hebrews will use 13 chapters to speak to the Jews. In Hebrews, he, the writer of Hebrews now first of all begins with Jesus and the angels. Jesus is superior. Jesus and Aaron. Jesus is superior. Jesus and Joshua. Jesus is superior. Jesus and Moses. Jesus is superior. Then Jesus and Melchizedek. Jesus is superior. Then at the end he now says to them, looking unto Jesus. 13 chapters to communicate with Jewish people Christ. 13 chapters. When Brother Paul will use just 3, 4, 5 lines to say what was said in 13 chapters. State of their heart. The audience, the audience deserves the kind of pastor they have. The audience deserves the kind of pastor they have. If it's a pastor that asks for papa coconut, it's because the people he has been sent to deserve his kind of operation. I mean, the writer of Hebrews uses 13 chapters when Brother Paul uses just five lines. And it's not because the guys are wicked. Moses was not wicked. It was the people's hearts. Even Jesus couldn't help them much. He did better than Moses, okay? But he couldn't do much. That's why he kept saying to them, I have yet many things to say to you, but I don't want to say it. Is that what is there? Now help me out. I have many things to say to you, but I don't want to say it. What, what, what does he say there? You cannot, you can, I want to say it, but you cannot. So because of your heart, it has affected the way I want to say what I want to say and how much I can say to you. How be it? When he, the Holy Spirit, is come, regeneration will take place in your heart. You will be born of the Spirit such that you can handle spiritual realities cheaply. 
There will be no need for symbols. There will be no need for signs. That's why with open, open faces, Kabaya, we behold the glory of God as we are in a mirror. And we are changed. 46 years of building to understand what Jesus will do in three days. 46 years of building. Scare is where you have parables. That same word, scare, shadow. It's where you have parables and dark sayings. Hallelujah. Meaning you will be in the temple, but that is not the temple. Meaning they will sprinkle animal blood on you, but that is not the blood. Meaning your priest will wear garments, but that is not the garment. Why? They were used to paint pictures of Jesus. So, these people were dead spiritually and they had to be communicated to in their state. Hebrews 8, 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Yes. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. The word pattern there is a Greek word tupos. T-U-P-O-S means example. Tupos means example. Just like Adam was a figure, a tupos, or a predecessor in Romans 5.14. Romans 5.14. Adam was, was a figure, a tupos. Adam... Adam's transgression, who is the two parts, the figure of sin that was to come. He was the figure or the topos of sin. The, 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 the King James has it as him, but actually in the original Greek, it is actually of sin that was to come. He's the predecessor of sin, Adam. Adam is not a figure of Christ. Adam is a predecessor of sin or he is a figure of sin to come. Adam is a figure. So God told Moses about what Jesus will do. And the best way Moses will communicate is to build a house. That's why when Moses wanted to talk Satan to them, since they couldn't understand Satan, he said serpent. He wanted to talk eternal life to them, since they couldn't understand eternal life, he said tree. All those symbols Moses was using was because of the state of their hearts. The best he could use were physical things. When the snakes were biting them, Moses wanted to say to them, Jesus saves you. Jesus delivers you. But it will not mean anything. So he looked for a brazen serpent. Fear. Put it up. Everybody, oh yeah, look. Oh yeah, look. If you look, you leave. Since I can't talk to you in spiritual terms, look at the physical symbol. All that was Moses' attempt to communicate Christ. Kill animal, put the blood on the doppels. Put the blood, put the blood. Since I can't tell you, believe in Jesus. Oh yeah, kill animal. The act of killing was faith expressed. Are we together here? But you see, because what was done by Moses with them was temporal. It was temporal because it was not the real deal. There was no revelation. There was no regeneration. The same angel of death that they escaped in Egypt overthrew them in the wilderness. It overthrew them in the wilderness. Because it was not the real deal. So the issue with Moses' communication was the audience. And what Jesus will do, he kept trying to get them to see that. Amen. You observe that while Aaron will still sprinkle blood on, on them, nothing will happen. Nothing. He will just sprinkle blood on them to give them <laughs> just for the purpose of doing it. But Aaron with all of his priesthood as Aaron will never dare sprinkle blood on Moses. Never. He sprinkles blood on all the children of Israel. But he behaves as if Moses is not there. You remember those days? Some of you won't. But the older ones among us. Those days when we used to go to primary school. 
in our classes, some of our classmates are fathers. You know? I used to have fathers in my class when we all go to school who are my teacher's mates. Some are older than the teacher. So when we are making noise and the teacher is angry, he will now back the elderly people. He will back them and face us, the small, small boys. He said, I'm warning all of you in this class. That's to say minus these ones. Because these ones behind, they can beat me up. I'm warning all of you, all of you, we're the only ones that used to take all the beating. So when Aaron is sprinkling blood on Israel, he will put Moses behind. Say, all of you take blood, take blood, and do as if Moses is not there. Why? Moses was a servant over his house. Moses knew something that they didn't know. Moses knew that that blood, nothing was inside. Moses knew that that temple was an empty building. He just hired carpenters to put it so he can explain something. <laughs> so he now tells them, anytime the high priest, I like Moses, honey. He tells them, anytime the high priest is going to go, tie a bell on his waist. Give him regalia. And then the high priest will go once a year. And the man will come. Everybody will be praying for the man to go in and come out. Nothing is inside there. That's why no, no priest ever died inside that place. No priest ever died inside the Holy of Holies. It's not there in the Bible. They will go in and come out and after a while they will die. A new priest will rise. But Moses himself will enter the tabernacle without wearing any cloth. He will enter any time he wants and come out. Because he knew that there was nothing there. When he taught wrong doctrine and God told him, you will only see the land and not enter. He, he was not worried. Because he knew that there was nothing in Canaan. So why will I worry myself to go to Canaan? He looked for the recompense of reward. And that is why in the New Testament, because Moses looked for his city, whose builder and maker was God. In the New Testament, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses appeared with us in the New Testament. Moses knew better. It's the people that determine his communication. And we shall see a few things. If you're getting blessed, shout a powerful amen. Amen. Moses kept speaking concerning Christ. After all that Moses did, God kept saying, where is my house? In John 5, 46, to know that Moses was speaking to these people concerning Christ. Jesus will now say, for had you believed Moses, read for me. Ye would have believed me. Yes. For he wrote of me. He wrote of me. I'm the one he was communicating. Aaron was not the priest. Aaron also needed a high priest. How do you know that? Because he covers himself first. <laughs> he will first of all offer himself. Why? No high priest. So it was an example or a drama of the real deal. Let's say we did a drama in this church. And in the drama, we use Pastor Isaac Okike as Donald Trump in our drama. Okay, and then we use a few of you as American senators in the drama. And we acted it in this church and made a small corner like White House. And Isaac Okike sat in there as Donald Trump. We finished acting the drama. Then Isaac Okike now decides to embark on a journey to White House. To take over the White House because he acted a drama as Donald Trump. What will you think is wrong with Isaac? Just because he acted drama. Drama does not translate to reality. From the immigration point in America, if he crosses Nigeria and enters, and they ask him, what's your purpose of coming to take over the White House? <laughs> the beating he will receive in that airport. If he comes back here alive, it will be a testimony. Coming to take over the White House? So, that is why that temple that Moses built, nothing was inside. It was a drama. It was just a drama. He was acting to communicate a message. Are we together in the house? Yeah. All those things Moses kept giving them was a mode of communication because of the state of their hearts. The real priest is Jesus. He is the message Moses was communicating. His house is what we are by identification. 
Hallelujah. So now question, what did Moses know like that, that gave him such power and gave him such influence? Hebrews 11, 23. By faith, Moses, yes. when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. That's right. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Yeah. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. He esteeming the reproach of Christ. Question. Did Moses know Christ? Huh? Did Moses know Christ? What did God reveal to Moses? Huh? All right. Could he have revealed it to the people? Could he have revealed it to the people? Could he have revealed it to the people? When he tried to reveal it to the people, why didn't he succeed in revealing it to the people? The state of their hearts. He wasn't keeping Christ from them. But they couldn't bear it. Question, why did he choose to use symbols and signs in communicating with them? Huh? A state of their hearts. Exodus 19.6. Read for me. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of God. That was God's desire for Israel. To be unto him a kingdom of priests. Read on. And an holy nation. Yes. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So God says, I want everybody in Israel to be a priest. Not just Aaron, not Levi. All of Israel. That's what I want. Then you know what Israel said? Eh, eh. We don't want to be priests. Moses, you. Go and hear from God. Anything God tell you, come and tell us. They chose for the kind of communication and for the kind of relationship they had. God said, I want you to be a kingdom of priests. They said, no, no. You go hear from God. Come tell us. Why? They doubted God. They didn't believe God. Even though God said, this is what I want. They said, God, we don't believe you. We don't even want it. They doubted God's plan for their lives. They didn't believe God's purpose for their lives. So when they doubted God, what happened? Exodus 24 verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord thou, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. I don't want to worship from afar. All right, worship ye afar off. Next verse. And Moses alone shall come near Moses the Lord. Moses alone shall come near the Lord. The rest are far. Who is writing the book? Eh? Exactly. Because he's the one writing. He has to show you how the distance between him and them. Okay. <laughs> the rest of you are far. Moses alone come near. What did God say earlier to them in chapter 19? What do I want? I want all of you to be a kingdom of priests, not just Aaron. But why was Aaron alone chosen? Why was Aaron alone chosen? Because of the hardness of their heart. They were in unbelief. They were in unbelief. So the communication of the temple was not God's plan. God never planned for people to communicate with him using things. God never planned for them to enter a place called temple. That was not his plan for them. Anyone who believed Christ in the Old Testament functioned with revelation. So while Moses had the spiritual, he gave unto them the physical. Moses knew where God was. Moses knew that God was not in the temple. Hence the way he operated with the temple. Hallelujah. He knew that God was in there. Hallelujah. Moses was a man of faith. Moses was what? A man of faith. Moses spoke by revelation. All the time he spoke. 
Look at the book of First Samuel as a roundup. Are you glad you came tonight? First Samuel chapter 21 verse 1. Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? Right to. And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabouts I send thee and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Next. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. Next. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. Are you following? I don't have this bread, but I have hallowed bread. But this is the condition on which you will eat the bread. If the young men have kept themselves from women. Okay? <laughs> Watch this. Next verse. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us. Without thinking. <laughs> they were so hungry. <laughs> they were so hungry. Just, uh, you say, if we have kept ourselves from women, of a truth, women have been far from us. Just give us this bread. Let us eat. We are hungry. <laughs> Are you still here? If you are still here, shout a powerful amen. Then they took the bread and they ate. They did what? Took the bread and they ate. Now, Matthew 12, 1 and 2. Jesus made reference to that. Read for me. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry. What was the state of the disciples? They were hungry, all right? And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Yes. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath they day. They do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now hold on. The truth is this. The revelation of Christ was all over the Old Testament. It's just that the people were so hardened they couldn't see it. Because when Moses struck the rock and water was coming out, what Moses was telling them is Christ, Christ, Christ. But they didn't see Christ. Instead, they were drinking. When they were hungry, a manna came from heaven. What Moses was telling them is that Christ, Christ, Christ. But they couldn't see Christ. They were seeing manna. To the point they were even hiding it. Moses even told them, man shall not live by bread alone. He was trying to communicate Christ. I mean, this guy was frustrated. He was trying to communicate Christ to these people. But instead of seeing Christ, they were happy to eat manna. He used temple to talk Christ. Instead of seeing Christ, they, they are stuck with the temple. Their hearts didn't allow them to come to a place of revelation. Their hearts, unbelief, unbelief kept their heart from receiving revealed knowledge, exact knowledge, precise knowledge. Unbelief. That was the major problem. And that's why all of us here, we have to get ready to unlearn a lot of things and relearn a lot of things. So we must make up our mind, everybody, to, to unlearn so much. So we can relearn because religion has messed, has messed people up. Religion is so wicked. Put back that, that Matthew for me, Matthew 12, read verse 2. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. All right. Which law were they talking about? The law of? All right. Go ahead. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did? This is Jesus now making reference. Have you not read what David did? When he was unhungered. Yes. And they that were with him. Yes. How he entered on into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread. Which was not lawful for him to was eat. Was not lawful for him to eat. Neither for them which were with him. Or his people that were with him. But only for the priests. Yes. Next verse. Or have ye not read in the law. How that on the Sabbath days. The priests in the temple profane the Sabbath. They profane the Sabbath. They violate the Sabbath. And. Are blameless. Yes. They violate the Sabbath. And they are blameless. Have you not read? Have you not read? That when Moses went and took an Ethiopian woman. And brought her back to Israel. And Aaron and Miriam stood up to rebuke Moses. God showed up and said. Hey. Miriam, Aaron. 
get here moses step aside i talked to moses face to face you guys where are you coming from what god was saying is moses is operating by revelation you which revelation do you have question what revelation was moses operating with when he told them you shall not marry out of israel and remember he gave them the law for the land of canaan the laws of moses was to govern israel in canaan but he himself when he told them don't marry out of egypt he already had a revelation that there's no jew and no gentile so that's why he went and carried away from ethiopia and it was okay because he already saw by revelation that in christ no male no female no jew no gentile were all one there's no demarcation but he gave them that law because of where they were going so they would not go and mingle themselves with gays and lesbians in the land of Canaan. Because that land was already inhabited. Do you remember? By nations stronger than them. And their job was to go and drive them out. Moses had revelation. He tried to bring it. They couldn't receive it. He kept it and gave them laws because of the state of their heart. He knew no Jew, no Gentile. That's the difference. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I say somebody shout hallelujah. Give me that Matthew 12, 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Oh, he has destroyed their temple. Did you see that? In this place is one greater than the temple. Jesus was telling them I'm greater than the temple. I'm not made for the temple. The temple is made for me. Is it not the same Jesus who said, who, who they asked, why do, do you heal on Sabbath day? Why are you healing on Sabbath day? And he said to them, man is not made for Sabbath, but Sabbath is made for man. And I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Moses didn't keep any of those laws because Moses walked by faith. The law is not made for a righteous man. The law is made for a sinner. A righteous man walks by faith. We walk by faith. And against such there is no law. The law of the spirit of life where in Christ Jesus has set me free from what? The law of sin of death. I'm free from the law of sin. I'm free from the law of sin. And I'm free from the law of death. There's no death anymore for me. I'm free from death. Oh, glory to God. Anybody here free from death? Anybody here free from sin? Well, if you're free from sin and death, jump on your feet and shout, I am free from sin and death. Now shout it very loud and I stand in the liberty. We are with Christ has set me free. I shall no longer be entangled with the yoke of bondage now shout it loud i am free by the blood of jesus now say it loud that death has no power over me the law is not for me the law is for the sinner i am of faith and they that be of faith are blessed with faithful abraham somebody shout i am blessed and i have access to the blessing of Abraham. I thought I would hear your amen like thunder. Amen. Lift your right hands, Lord. I decree that revelation knowledge flows. Our hearts are open to revelation. Barriers are broken. Obstacles are broken. Veils are destroyed. We rise and we grow tall in the revelation of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. And I decree sick bodies are healed. Yokes are destroyed. Barriers are terminated. Obstacles are removed. Now, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive miracles. Miracles. I call impossibilities possible. Impossibilities possible. Impossibilities possible. Impossibilities possible. Where there was no way, you have the way. Access, 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 great and mighty things. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. And thank you, Lord, for the blessing that we have in Christ tonight. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that, amen, like thunder. Well, go ahead, give Jesus a shout. Give him a clap. Get excited tonight. Glory. 
Look at me, everybody. Say, I have revelation. Say it very loud. Say it louder. Say it three more times. Two more times. One more time. Say, I don't need drama. I have the real deal. I didn't hear your amen. The only way you can be a son of God is for you to believe in Christ. Because only Christ can bring you into such. That is to say, by the predeterminate counsel of God, it was preordained that the only way a man will be glorified will be in Christ. Kebaya, kebaya. That in the proriso of God, the glory of any man will be in Christ. Hello over there, Abel Damina is my name. And I'm excited because of this one conference that will change your life coming to London for all of you in the United Kingdom and Europe from the 2nd to the 5th of June. 2nd to the 5th of June, right in the city of London. The venue is going to be Power City International Enfield, not London. Main Hall, St. John's Church. And the postcode is m 13 4DA. And other details of the conference are on the screen. We'll see you there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I believe you've been affected and impacted by the word of God. Now, I decree and I declare that the word you receive today, revelation knowledge keeps increasing in your heart. You will walk in these realities and you will live an overcomer's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, remember, there's the Global Discipleship Academy and registration is going on right now. It's a free online academy where i equip you and train you on the basics the fundamentals that helps you to live out the riches of redemption if you have never been discipled before even if you're in a church somewhere you've never been discipled before you've been a christian nobody has discipled you before oh my goodness this is your opportunity you know discipleship doesn't mean you're a new christian it just means that we're able to take you through certain rudiments that also empowers you to disciple other people in the knowledge of christ second timothy 2 to paul says to timothy the things you have heard of me among many witnesses the same commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others so if you want to join the academy today don't procrastinate there's an email address on the screen you can shoot an email to us right now and also, there's a WhatsApp number. You can shoot a WhatsApp request and we're willing to quickly make sure you are enlisted in the Global Discipleship Academy. It's an opportunity you don't want to miss at all. Tell other people about it because this is very, very critical and crucial because the foundation of your Christian life is very critical. It determines everything that you do as a child of God. Secondly, my books are available. I want to encourage you to order for them. There's a phone number and there's an email. These are my new books, How to Win in Life, Walking in Love. The second one is The Gifts and Calling of God. The third one is Spirit Life. These are new. They just came out. They will empower and equip you to walk in victory. Also, there's a Christocentric meal, our daily devotional material. And you can also use it as a pastor for sermon notes in your church for three good years without repeating any message. It's a tool that empowers and equips you to fulfill your ministry effectively. We love you guys. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Till I come back to you again on this same platform, enjoy the grace of God and be blessed. Amen.